Hi, Tim Blanchip here with Divorce661.com. And what we're talking about today is what to do with the family home when going through a divorce. Should you buy it or should you buy your spouse out? Should you sell it? Uh, try and keep it together. Again, I'm Tim Blanchip with Divorce661.com. I'm a paralegal and legal document assistant that specializes in amicable divorce cases in California. Today, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to be reacting and giving comments and commentary uh, and sharing some of Dave Ramsey's advice on how to deal with the family home when going through a divorce. Again, should you sell it, buy it, um, keep it yourself, buy the other party out, keep it together and so forth. And these are real world decisions that our clients going through amicable divorce are trying to make um, when going through the divorce process in California. Again, we handle and specialize in amicable divorce cases in California. I haven't said that. So yeah, I'll be adding my commentary. I have a couple of videos of his to go through where he's answering questions that uh, uh, people calling into his show are asking regarding the divorce process and what they should do at the home. And I'll play them so you can hear their specific financial situations and uh, what Dave's advice is to them specifically. And then I'll go into more detail about what our clients are dealing with in their decisions, along with commenting on what Dave's seen in regards to what our clients might do in those situations. So I'm going to pull up the first video here, and then uh, I will go ahead and make my comments. If you're just joining us, if you have any questions, we'll probably ha uh, handle those at the end. Um, so let's get started. Rosemary's in Lexington, Kentucky. Welcome to the Dave Ramsey Show, Rosemary. Hi, Dave. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? So I, unfortunately, am looking at a divorce coming oh. down the pike here. Mm -hmm. I know. Um, we've tried to do your courses before, so I'm familiar with it. But anyway, so it's, uh, I have not worked in 14 years. Mm -hmm. I have had a job for the last seven months, not making $12 an hour. So my question is. So one comment here is obviously a lot of our clients, there is one spouse working. One spouse is not um, when you're going through the divorce process. And what I tell folks is consider this, you have your income, whether it's one income or both of your working through dual incomes, and you have one set of expenses, your vehicles, your house, you know, cars, et cetera. When you get a divorce and you have a home and one party is going to move out, and this is regardless if you're going to, to sell it or buy out or whatever you guys decide to do, you're going to have two sets of expenses. So you already, the issue is, especially in this particular case where one spouse is, isn't working, is there is that same amount of money that you've had during the marriage that's now going to have to be used for two sets of household expenses. As so many people are saying, I do have a little bit of a nest egg. My dad passed away. So I do have about three hundred and sixty two thousand dollars how old are that you? I put away in um some mutual funds. How old uh, are you? Be, I'm fifty. I'll be fifty on Friday. <laughs> any, any, happy birthday. Any kids home? Thanks. Yes, two, fourteen and twelve. Okay. All right. And uh I assume the child support payments will be substantial. I hope, yes. So this is the other thing to consider if there is children involved and in addition to the additional expenses you're going to have already with your finances and having two sets of household expenses, if there is children and you're going to have child support, there's that to consider. And then also if you are going to have alimony, there's that to consider. So keep in mind, like I was just saying, you have two sets of in, you have your income and you have one household expense. Now you have two household expenses along with spouse support and child support, potentially, and that you're trying to make this work. He's in the home right now. He has no plans to leave the home mm -hmm. because of finances. Uh, so I guess what I don't know is do I... Because of finances, he doesn't want to leave the home. What's that mean? He, he, we can't afford for him to leave. We cannot afford for him to leave another place and... Our home. What? So they're talking about uh, that he is still in the home because of finances. Uh, we find that at least 50% of our clients uh, 
prior to filing for divorce or, or while they filed for divorce are still living together prior to filing for divorce, especially in a situation where you have to make a decision on how you're going to make it with work in regards to the home, meaning if you're amicable, again, most of our clients are amicable, going through the amicable divorce process, they're still in the home together prior to filing for divorce. And usually this is for financial reasons because of what we just talked about and the cost of moving out and the additional expenses. Many times it doesn't make sense to move out prior to divorce, although you can, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, if you looked at the finances, but a lot of our clients want to know, especially where one spouse isn't working, like in this case, what is their financial situation going to look like post-divorce? How much money will they have to work with when we calculated and suppose, you know, spouse support and child support um, and so forth. And, and maybe they're going to sell the house and split the proceeds. How much money are they going to have to move on so they can go out and look for a place to buy or rent? To pay the bills. Uh, about seventy six thousand. What is owed on your home? Two thirty two five twenty one. Mm, okay. So your questions. We, do we sell the house? Yes. Do I? Yeah. Do I yeah. keep the house? No, we don't, the house. Because is, I can't afford the, the house. The house. The house is not a blessing. Okay, so you can see how it e how easy it is for Dave to make the comment to just sell. So. With our clients, we find that many times they want to try and keep the house for one reason or another, even if it doesn't necessarily make sense financially or on paper, or maybe it's going to completely stress them out financially. So like in the, in many cases, our clients will, uh, they'll, they'll, they're trying to keep the house, but it doesn't make sense to, again, on paper, it would make more sense for them just to sell it split the proceeds, go their separate ways for a lot of reasons, which we'll uncover in some of the other of Dave's comments here. But again, our clients are working to try and find ways to keep their house. And usually this boils down to uh, there being minor children in the house and them wanting to keep the kids there until usually they're 18 or maybe when there's a better time to sell the house and maybe the kids are just a little bit older. The only way you could afford to keep the house is pay it off. And that would use up almost all your money. No, right. No, I don't want to do that. I, I don't want to do that either. I don't think so. Okay. And uh, this is a horrible thing y'all are going through. I'm so sorry. And it's hard Thank on the kids. You. And moving is the thing you're not, you don't want to tell the kids they got to move to, but they do. Right. They do. Because you guys cannot afford the house. Correct. It needs to be sold. Now, you, you can't right. handle it. We have it. no car payment and only about $8,000 in debt. Okay. What's the debt on? Credit cards, just okay. like random. Yeah, both of you on random those. credit cards. Both of the, us on those. Okay. Yeah. So as soon as the as a part of the divorce, why don't you pay off the credit cards? I will. Mm -hmm. and, and, that was my plan. And cut them up and make sure the accounts are completely closed so he doesn't run them back up. Okay. Okay. Not his problem. Okay. <laughs> Mine for sure. Okay. Well, then then you cut them up so you don't run them back out. Right. And then what okay. you've got to do is go rent something as cheaply as you can and develop what you want to be your career in the second act. Okay. So this is another issue that comes up with our clients. Um, they are finding out that to rent a home after their divorce, in many cases, will result in a higher payment, uh, especially if they're looking for something similar to what they had. Uh, in many cases, even renting a one bedroom, and I don't know, you know, anywhere in California, even one bedrooms can be as much as some of our clients' mortgages are. The problem is, how do you keep the house um, in a proper way? Our clients, again, are going to great lengths to keep the home when they, you know, when that's the goal for the kids or whatnot. Um, even so much as maybe doing things they shouldn't, is, you know, not that it's wrong, just that it's a little bit financially dangerous in that they are staying both staying on the mortgage while one party is living in the house because they don't want to perhaps refinance it at the current rates or maybe the, there's no equity in the home at the current time. So uh, that was this video. I want to go on to the next video that again talks about, um, you know, when you are getting divorced, um, and Dave Ramsey says in this next video, once divorce is decided, the marriage is turned into a business transaction. And I always tell that to my clients, not so much when there's children involved, because you can't say it's just a business transaction when you're talking about the kids in custody and so forth, but in regards to the money, spouse support, child support, 
um, the house, dividing up your assets and debts and so forth. That is a business decision. So with our clients that don't have children, I tell them this literally is a financial business decision. So let's, let's see what Dave has to say in this next uh, video here. The curtain went down on the first act. When the curtain comes up, everybody's standing yeah, on the stage I just smiling. Up the we're standing mm -hmm. on stage smiling. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Mr. Ramsey. How are you? Better than I deserve. How can I help? Good, good. Hey, so uh, going through a life changing event right now, and I just wanted to get your opinion on a couple of things. Um, one, so I'm going to be going through a divorce uh, pretty soon here. Hmm. And I was just wondering if um, I should sell my house or keep it and just buy buy my wife out. Hmm. Yes, yeah. I'm sorry. How long are you married? Uh, five years. Wow. What happened? Um, just real quick, by the way, we never ask what happened when people are going through divorce. Uh, in California, it's just simply irreconcilable differences. Uh, I've been doing this 10 years. I've never asked our, our, our clients why they're getting divorced. It's, I feel like it's rubbing salt in the wound to bring that up. It's, I don't want to say it's irrelevant. You obviously have your reason for getting divorced, but as far as what we do as a business, getting you through the divorce amicably, I don't think the goal is to try and stir up the pot emotionally. Just a lot of disagreements. So I have a uh, child from a past relationship that is not biologically mine. But I'm going to let you guys listen. There's a little bit of dialogue here that matters uh, to set to this up as far as this income or how uh, this plays out for Dave's decision. Hmm. And, you know, she's 13 years old now. But her, um, my ex, her mother of the other daughter, she had a lot to do with it. Just caused a lot of problems between my, me and my wife. Hmm. Um. Yeah, so now we're at this point now, and we're we're separated now. I moved out of the house; she's still living there. Mm -hmm. Um, but so I'm just what is what is the house kind of, worth? The house is worth about two between two sixty and two seventy. And what do you guys owe on it? Uh, about one eighty three. And what do you make a year? A uh, hundred k. Okay. Any other debts that the two of you have to deal with? Uh, that we do. No, I do have a couple of debts. Uh, like I have uh, about seven grand of past child support, which I've been trying to settle with my ex on that as well. Uh, so we should be coming at some agreement here pretty soon. I owe about, seven, All right, there's another seven, child seven. somewhere. Yes. yes. Oh, okay. So, so basically with, with that, um, the other child that's not biologically mine, I do have a child that is biologically mine with that. I got you. Um, okay. With her mother's Just make, yeah. making sure I understood. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah. And, and so, um, are, do you have custody of any of these children? Uh, joint custody. Joint. On okay. just one, just one that's biologically mine. Okay. Well, I, I'm, I'm sorry you're going through this. The, um, I've got a, def a friend that does uh, divorce counseling, and uh, she, okay. she says that a divorce, once the decision is made, and it sounds very clear that this decision is made, um, then it turns a, a marriage into a business transaction. And so there's two pieces of business here that you need to consider. One is you would never leave someone in the home that you're on the mortgage unless it's you. Okay. So that would mean the house is either sold if she's staying in one of if she can't ref it's either refinanced into her name or or it's sold or it's refinanced into your name. Uh the second okay. thing I Okay, so that's what we were kind of talking about leading into this video in the decisions our clients are making. So in this particular case, I, I took some notes here that just to make this clear. So the advice that Dave gives is the most logical advice, right? It makes the most financial sense to not have one party remaining on the mortgage if one's keeping it. Either refinance it, buy it out completely, uh, or sell the house, not to remain on the mortgage. Um, and so what my notes here say is the issue becomes that if one spouse stays in the home and is unable to refinance the home, both parties remain on the mortgage. The issue this poses is that if the spouse were to default on the mortgage, both spouses would be impacted financially as far as their credit's concerned. 
Another issue that this could Im cause uh, impact on to the spouse who did not stay in the home is if they want to purchase another house, uh, they're going to show that loan on their uh, credit, and perhaps that will impact their ability to purchase the home, especially if in the divorce decree, the settlement agreement, it doesn't specifically state that the party staying in the home will be financially responsible 100%. That's the only way, generally speaking, when we're dealing with lenders that you're able to uh, say, I'm not responsible for that. But what we're talking about in this particular case is where the parties agree to keep the house. One party is going to stay in it with, for instance, the children and then sell at a later date. So what they're doing is they're both saying they're going to be financially responsible for the house, even though one spouse remaining in it. So they're not going to have a settlement agreement saying they're not responsible for that. So Despite this being seemingly logical, what Dave had to say, we have many clients who decide to keep the house, keeping one spouse in the home, both staying on the mortgage. They are assigned to do this mostly because they're minor children. They may decide to keep this in fashion until the kids turn 18 and agree to sell at a later time. So that's basically what we're seeing is that they want to keep the kids in the home, do everything they possibly can, not in all cases, but with many of our clients, they're trying to figure out, even if it doesn't make sense financially, how they can pull that off. Um, another decision couples are making currently is to hold the property jointly, like I'm saying, but not for reasons of the kids, whether one lives there or not, or they rent it. And so why they're doing this is to hopefully allow time to pass for the home values to go back up. So there are more proceeds to split, whether this is because they recently bought the home, which we've had that happen uh, recently. You know, people bought at the top of the market and then it kind of cooled off a little bit. Uh, they didn't put a whole lot down. Um, they would sell in this particular case, so different than we're talking about, they would sell, but the real estate commissions uh, would eat up all plus more. They'd have to come out of pocket um, to sell the house. So those are some of the, the the reasons that our clients are making decisions, some of the decisions they're up against when doing this. I would look at is I would just ask myself, if all this weren't going on and I make $100,000 a year with a few other miscellaneous debts here uh, as a single guy, would I buy that house? This is a good question to ask yourself. If you're if you're single, would you want this house? We're talking about, if you just join us, people, they're getting divorced, working against all odds to try and keep the house for a variety of reasons. And does it make sense to stay in that house, that family home, let's say other than minor children? We've had, and I made some notes here, I wrote, sometimes the decision to keep the house really does not make sense. I said, we've had couples agree that one spouse would keep the family home that was 5,000 square feet. And this is a real life example. This house was great when they were raising their five children, but now the wife will be living there alone in this giant house with an equally giant mortgage. So this was the family home. They had it for many years. Kids, uh, they raised five children. Um, the kids are now grown and out of the house and now they're getting divorced and she will be living there alone. And um, not a problem. You guys can agree to do this, but the the financial stress. So the, the issue in this particular case was they had to agree to such a high amount of spousal support that was warranted, but that literally every penny of spouse support paid to the wife was to cover the extremely high mortgage. And the answer is probably not. Okay. You probably just wouldn't be, I mean, let's just say you're living in an apartment, you're a single guy, which is what you're getting ready to be, right? Yeah. And you're making a hundred grand. You got a little debt. You're cleaning up. Would you go buy this house? I like the house. Um, I like the house, but I think down the road I would end up selling it. Um, and it, you know, mainly, mainly the the whole question is I just I feel guilty. I feel bad for my other two children that I currently have with my wife. I feel like I'm kind of kicking them out by selling the house. You know. Okay, so you have two children with the lady you're divorcing. No, no, I have two children with my wife currently. The one that oh, you're yes, divorcing? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, so is this four? I have three total that are nine and okay. So, uh, well, I, I, um, 
I didn't know they were there until just now. Um, yeah. but if she's going to stay in the house, she needs to refinance it. She can't afford it. She can't afford then it. She on shouldn't her own. stay she's in the really house. Then she yeah. shouldn't stay in the house. Again, you see how simple it is to make these decisions when you're not attached. Obviously this guy and, and his wife, even though they're getting divorced, they're, they're both concerned about the children and they don't want to uproot the children. And again, that you can see that pressure, that they feel to keep them in the house, um, even though it may not make sense, both financially and the risk of default, meaning if in this case, he's saying she can't afford the house. And obviously, you know, that may, may or may not be if there's alimony and child support, maybe that will allow that to be uh, the mortgage to be paid. But is it enough to allow her to refinance? And does it make sense to refinance if interest rates are higher than the current rate? There's a lot that goes into that. But that just goes back to me saying the cleanest way of doing this, this being getting a divorce when there's a home involved, is to sell it and split the proceeds. But what you'll see in this next comment is why that also can pose a problem. Okay. And and I don't know why you would move in the house if she's not going to be there unless you're going to have them 50% of the time, are you? No. Okay. No, I mean, it, it'd be more like 40 cents. That's, that's part of my other question. I mean, I'm, um, I'm basically at the point right now in my job as well that um, I was already kind of planning my, an exit strategy to start my own business. Uh, so I don't know if, if I should just continue on with that or not. Yeah, I, I think the really best thing for it. her and you is to sell the house and split the equity and she takes it and goes and gets her a nice place to rent in the similar neighborhood where the schools and so forth are similar and she stays, you know, in the general area. So I think we can all agree. And we were talking about this earlier that it's not always just that simple. Um, if you bought your home, uh, you know, at a certain time and your mortgage is at a, you know, a certain price. And we were talking earlier about how, that the rents that you pay if you were to sell your home, many of our clients are finding that the rent can be can be higher than their existing mortgage, which may be your only option, especially if you cannot refinance the house. And when our clients are wanting to keep the house, what they are, if they are able to refinance, again, the other issue is let's say they refinanced three or four years ago and they got into three or four percent interest rate. They both are working and therefore have the ability to refinance the house. And uh, but when they look at the rates, they realize they're going to end up more in the five and six percent interest rate, and that will increase their um, mortgage. Obviously, put them at a worse rate. And in addition to that, they're going to be adding on whatever amount of buyout of their spouse in in the process. So, in my opinion, if you're asking me what the simplest way is, is to simply sell the house, split the proceeds. Go your separate ways. It does bring on other problems, finding a place uh, in a similar location, especially if you like the school district. Um, so that that's another issue. Uh, but again, I think selling the house, splitting the proceeds is the, is the easiest, cleanest way. I don't know that you want to be any more financially tied to your spouse post-divorce. You know, you're going to have perhaps alimony or child support and so forth. Um, maybe you guys are helping each other pay off some debts. But to be tied to the house, uh, may not something you want to do long term. Although, like I said, many of our clients going through a divorce are doing that for a variety of reasons, mostly to keep the children in the house. A uh, big thing now is with the interest rate uh, going up, one party does want to buy out the spouse, but they don't want to do it now. They want to do it when the interest rates come down. So they're saying, okay, uh, wife, you can stay in the house, pay the mortgage, um, don't refinance it, and I'll give you one, two, three, four, five years to, you know, some type of time frame to, uh, at some point when interest rates get to maybe a certain percentage or have some um, timeline involved, uh, either time or interest rate and say, at this point, you'll, you'll refinance and you will cash me out. Or if for some reason you're unable to uh, refinance uh, within that given time period that will at that point simply sell the house and split the proceeds. We have some clients right now because interest rates have gone up and because maybe they bought at a, um, higher, the high, one of the higher price points, and now it's cooled a bit, that they're agreeing that, for instance, they want to sell the house now, they would sell the house now, but because they bought it at a higher price and now the prices have cooled, they have there's no proceeds to split. So they want to either keep it and one of them stay in there or they will uh, rent it out. 
for a period of time. Um, and again, many times they just keep, they're just staying in the home because of the minor children. So there's no right, wrong, or you know, indifferent answer. It's whatever you want to do going through an amicable divorce. Uh, we've seen it all here. You know, the courts aren't making the decision for you when going through divorce amicably. You totally stay out of the court uh, process. You will never see a judge using our service. So um, sky's the limit as far as what you want to come up with agreement wise. Um, we will never get involved in uh, what you want to do. We're here to offer options, solutions. Um, you just tell us in plain English as well. Tell our clients. I'll say, just tell me in plain English what you want. And I will put it into the proper legal format that the court will accept. So Tim Blankenship, Divorce661.com, assisting clients going through amicable divorce anywhere in California. We're doing live broadcasts every day at 12 o'clock with different subjects. So please uh, check your LinkedIn, your YouTube, uh, Facebook. Uh, we're broadcasting uh, to all of these sites. Uh, you can uh, go there now and, and get notified of our upcoming shows. 